everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm the founder of Code of the Future and today we're going to be continuing with the Rust course where I'm teaching you all about Rust for beginners. Before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you are new to the channel. But with that said, I'll put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so in the previous video we looked at command line arguments and we mentioned something known as a vector. Now that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, in the previous video I said don't worry too much about what this means but I'll be explaining all of that today. So I've created a new folder called tutorial 12 and we're going to do a bit of coding in here for vectors. Awesome. So we're just going to write vectors. Now if you remember from the data types video where I covered arrays, I mentioned that arrays are a little bit harder uh, in Rust than they are in other programming languages. You know, you can't append things into arrays like you would be able to do in Python and that's where vectors come in. So vectors are essentially the replacement, I guess, <laughs> of what arrays can do and I'm going to be showing you some of the examples that we can do with vectors in this video. So recall you cannot add two arrays like you can in other programming languages. This makes arrays hard to deal with. Instead, we deal with vectors. That's what we're going to be doing today. So I guess a couple of comments here. Vectors are re essentially resizable arrays, so you can change the size of them. Um, Something else that I want to mention is vectors can only store values of the same type. So, you know, like I say in, <laughs> in this entire course, data types in Rust, very important. And again, it crops up again here. If you have vectors, everything in that vector has to be the same data type. That's just how it works. So I'm going to get rid of print hello world and we're going to let a mutable vector and that just means we can alter it if you remember from our previous video right so I'm gonna write all this out and then I'm gonna explain what each of the things mean if I can write correctly okay so first we assign a mutable variable vector the type here and this is how you define a type for, for a vector so this is vec for vector and it's full of i32 data types. So each of these in this vector is i32. This is how you define a vector, uh, VEC, so vec with an exclamation mark, and then you just put whatever you want in that vector followed by a semicolon. So hopefully that's relatively straightforward. Again, it's the same as any assignment of a variable, you just let, you know, whether it's mutable or not, you let the variable you have, then a colon with the data type that you want it to be, and then write exactly what you want that variable to be. Now, we can do that, um, or we can also create a new empty vector. Now, here, we didn't actually need to write this. We didn't explicitly need to say, well, this is what this vector type is going to be. So I could have omitted this. I could you know, delete that and just have it as that, and Rust will automatically infer it. Probably as i32s, so I think that's the default for vectors. Um, but if you want to create a new empty vector, you must state the type. So um, we need to state the data type of an empty array because Rust doesn't know what elements we may eventually store in it. And that's, I guess, intuitive. Uh, you know, we have an empty vector. We don't know what's going to be in there, so Rust can't then say, oh, well, I'm going to say an i8 when it's, you know, an i64 or something. Um, so we're going to let, uh, let's say, vector 2. And we're going to do the same notation to define it. So we're going to have a vector full of i32s. And very similar to what we did when we created a brand new string in the video, not the video, the section, not before this, the one before that, when we looked at uh, user input, we're just going to say vec, colon, colon, new, and this creates a brand new vector. So let's look at some operations that we can do with vectors. And this is just to show you how similar they are with, you know, with arrays and also just if you want to have a play around yourself, I'm just going to show you some cool features of them. So first one is we're going to do some reassigning well, reassign values. So we have vector two. 
uh, in fact, let's do vector 1 because vector 2 is empty. Uh, let's have vector 1 and let's say I want to change the first element, so that's 0, index 0. This is very similar to arrays, exact same as arrays. And we're going to let that equal to, let's say, 20. So instead of 1 here, we're going to have 20. And let's print that. Well, in fact, let's, instead of printing out this, because we know it's already 20, we're going to print out the vector. And recall, for arrays, we need to put a colon and a question mark inside these brackets here. Uh, and that's just because we're dealing with multiple values at once. So let's say, okay, well, now we're going to see what vector 1 is. And the reason that we can do this is because vector, in fact, I called it vector instead of vector 1, so sorry, vector 1, that should be. The reason we can do this, the reason we can manipulate it, is because it is indeed mutable. And if you remember from the video where I explained everything to do with mutability, that's exactly why. So let's do a bit of a cargo run. Hopefully everything should work. Yep, there we go. It's replaced vector 1 with 20. Okay. Now we'll move on and look at finding a specific element within the vector. So it's very similar to, to this process here, except we just cut a few different things out. So we're going to go straight into printing what it is that we want. Um, and so I'm going to say, well, let's take vector one and I want the second element. So that's zero one. So that's why we have one. Um, yeah. And so that'll, that hopefully will print out two when I run all being well. Indeed it does two. So here, all we've done is pretty much just the same as here. We've said, okay, well, let's take this element of this vector. So here we've taken the first index, which is the second element of vector two, vector one, sorry. And that is indeed two. And that's exactly what gets printed here. Awesome. So now let's do something, I guess, handy in things like data analytics. Let's look at the length of a vector. Again, this is pretty simple. I'm just going to copy this print line. We're going to do a, bit, a lot of print line today just to show you some cool operations. Uh, and all you're going to do is take the vector that you want, so vector one, and you're going to say dot len, len, yeah, that's right, and open brackets. Again, we'll save and we'll cargo run. Hopefully, it'll come out with four because we'll have four elements. There we go, four. It does indeed. Again, you know, we're dealing with some very simple vectors here, but when you have data, it's going to be a lot, lot more complicated. Um, yeah. Uh, now, what I'm going to show you is how you can add add to a vector. So, what I'm going to say is I'm going to take vector one, and I'm now going to push five, and I'm going to print vector one, and we'll just see what happens. And then I'll explain what's going on. Cargo run. Okay. So, what this has done, push adds the value that you input into here. So five. So if I said ten. And I rerun, 10 should be at the end. There we go, 10's at the end. Okay, so that's how we add, let's say, a specific value to a vector. So I'll just put this adds 10 on the end. And then we'll, yeah. Um, now you can also remove the last entry from a vector. And the way that we do that is we'll just do vector1.pop. I always find that quite satisfying, I must admit. <laughs> pop just popping it off the end okay there we go and we'll just print out the vector and what's going to happen is it will remove that 10 that i originally put on the end cool there we go now something else that's really handy with vectors is we can do looping so we can say this loops through all the values in your array so what we're going to do is incorporate a for statement so we're going to say for element in vector dot iter open bracket oh, and then we're going to print line and we're just going to print that element yeah we'll just leave it like that so all this all this is doing is it's saying for every element in vector and dot iter will iterate over vector so you kind of need this iteration here because what that does is it'll iterate between every value in your vector. So it's saying for every element in the vector, once it's iterated, we're going to print that element. Okay, and let's do a cargo run. Ah, we have an error. What's the issue here? 
Oh, I've accidentally put a C in the pop value there. I don't, don't know how I managed to do that. Uh, let's have a look vector. It's because I haven't put vector one. Again, he just love errors me. Um, yeah, there we go. So it iterates over every single value. So that's how you use a for loop to get every value in your vector. I realized, I think earlier I said array instead of vector. So I'm very sorry. This whole video here is on vectors. Uh, and I just get into the habit of talking about arrays because I'm so used to dealing with Python. So I'm very sorry about that if I happen to slip up and say array instead of vector. Now I'm going to show you looping and mutating. So I'm just going to copy some code into here and we're going to explain what's going on. So we are taking a for loop again. We're saying for y, so this is going to be every element. It's kind of exactly what we've done here, except I've used y instead of element. So for y in vector one dot iter underscore mut. So this is doing exactly what we did previously. It's just taking vector one, which we have up here, and it's saying, okay, we can iterate, but we're going to make these variables inside mutable, which means we can then change them. And then we're going to say, okay, so each y value, we're going to add 10 onto. So each element in this vector one, we're going to add 10, then we're going to print each of those. Now this star or this, you know, asterisk, this is what is known as the dereference operator, and that's just something that you need uh, when doing this iter.mut uh, in vectors. Okay, so let's do a clear and a cargo run. There we go. So we have 30, 12, 13, 14, because what's happened is it's taken every element in our vector and it's added 10 onto it. Cool. So there you go. That is looping and mutating. Uh, and that is everything that I wanted to talk to you about vectors. I've covered the basics in terms of how you assign vectors and data types, and then also just some cool operations that you can do with vectors. But that has been vectors in Rust. So that was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you aren't already subscribed to the channel. Comment if you fancy commenting. I also have a donation page and a Patreon set up for exclusive behind the scenes footage, uh, if you fancy checking that out. Um, but yeah, as I said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.